What's up, guys? Welcome back to the Chiss Ascendancy, episode five. Uh, so, last week we reviewed The Mandalorian, season one. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Today we are jumping right into Clone Wars season seven. Episode and one. Episode one came out. Uh, Probably three. Today. today. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I've got a I've got a nine month old son, and so he woke up right at about three uh, to be fed, and. I checked Disney Plus, and it was available, and I had to control myself because uh, I wanted to watch it so bad. But we decided we'd watch it together, watch it together. and this is our review. So what we're going to do first, we talked about this, is spoiler-free review for three or four minutes, and then we'll take a, you know, we'll take a pause and we'll say, hey, if you haven't watched it, here's your warning, and then we'll just go full into everything that's in the episode. Yep. Cool. So obviously we record on Fridays. This is coming out Monday, and so you've had a couple of days. So this is your warning. Okay. So we'll go ahead and jump in. What were your thoughts and emotions without trying to give anything away? No spoilers. Uh, it was the return to justice. I I never really. Just I honestly good. never thought that we would get more Clone Wars, and I was yeah. really upset. Um, the it got canceled. I, mm-hmm. I knew that they had more they wanted to do. Man, they didn't get to. I sent you that article that there was like 20 something episodes that yeah. they had ideas for, they had plots for, they had arcs for, and we're getting 12 of the 28 or 48 or I don't remember. Yeah, there's a bunch of them. It, um, might, it might have been 40 something episodes though. I think it was a big because number. Because Dark Disciple was, was a big story arc. Number. Oh my gosh. Well, hopefully, if Star Wars is Star Wars, then they'll be like in two years, it's back. <laughs> I'd be happy for it. That'd be cool. Okay, so what did you think? What was your... All right, a scale out of 1 to 10. How much did you like it or dislike it? Uh, uh, highs and lows as far as emotions? I think a solid 8. Yeah? Yeah. I think... I mean, it's obviously nothing's nothing's perfect. You know, yeah. that 10's very uh, elusive. Mm-hmm. But I, I, there was a lot of cool stuff. There was just cool little shots that were animated. They were like, oh, that's dope. Or, you know, right. just like little things that the characters themselves did. You're like, oh, that's kind of dope. You know, just like, it's everything that I loved about Clone Wars because Clone Wars allows you to do so much that you can't really put into the movies. Right. And that's what I love about it. And that's what they gave me. Yep. I'd say the same for me, eight or nine, you know. I don't want to give anything a ten. That way, if there's something better, I can't go, this is a ten and a half. But, uh, yeah, eight or nine, loved it. Uh, I don't know if, if, I think we talked about this, and maybe viewers at home, you don't know this, but a while back before they knew that they were gonna re-release stuff, they kind of showed us unfinished episodes and released storyboards and some scripts mm-hmm. and things like that on StarWars.com, and The Bad Batch, which is this first story arc, was one of those things. And so without giving any spoilers, uh, there were things that as I was watching, they would say something or something would happen and I would go, oh yeah, I remember reading about that. I remember seeing mm-hmm. unfinished versions of that and you know it's a good episode when you kind of already had seen it, in a sense, yeah. and it was still so good. Uh, it just it had really good replay value, which is great. Um, and I've got to say, man, the Bad Batch is, is pretty sick. So, set up some really cool yeah. stuff. You know, we've never, you know, like we said, we never really, I, I don't remember if you watched Clone Wars while I was live on TV, but I didn't watch it till it was already online. I think I watched it while they were making... I think I started it in like 2013, mm-hmm. so uh, when the Lost episodes or whatever, the Lost Missions right. got added to it, it was like, oh, you know, something a little extra, but then that was all So was you saw the whole series up to season five, mm-hmm. and you'd seen all of those yeah. in one sitting, or not one sitting, but like yeah. back to back, and then when Lost Missions got added, you were able to binge that as well, because mm-hmm. it was on Netflix, and that's right. how Netflix does things. Disney Plus, man, they're milking that cash cow. They're doing yeah. one at a time. Gotta keep you week by week by week. So I've never had to wait a week for a new Clone Wars. And if Mandalorian taught me anything, I will be parched and ready and thirsty for Clone Wars next week. Yeah. So loved it. Um, and it was amazing. I It set up some stuff for the future that I'm excited for. It, you know, it was, again, it was stuff that I knew was coming, but it was still amazing. Loved the, it was like an updated version of the same art style. Mm-hmm. Um it was amazing to hear D. Bradley Baker again. Yeah. Uh, well, it was cool because it's like all the same characters, but they definitely put them along in the timeline mm-hmm. a little bit further. You know, mm-hmm. Anakin's hair is closer to episode three. Yep. 
Yep, uh, absolutely. It's not really a spoiler, but Cody's got his scars. You know, just things that they're pushing along that yeah. is obviously moving the story along chronologically. Yep. So, if you haven't seen it, that's the end of our spoiler-free review. Pretty, very service level, obviously. Yeah, pretty basic. So, if you haven't seen it yet, go and watch it on Disney+. Plus. Clone Wars Season 7, Episode 1, The Bad Batch. And for those of you who have seen it, stay tuned because now we're going to jump into it. Okay? Here we go. Right off the bat, my freaking emotions when you go and they're talking about there's battle tactics that are going on, that we've got to do a different plan, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. And then you kind of go into the, the bunker, the, yeah. the, the locker room, wherever he's at. First of all... Real quick before we get too far, okay. I would like to just acknowledge how dope it was that they had that one troop transport land backwards. Yeah. Kind of like, it was very helicopter-esque where it was like, the gunship. Shoo. Yeah. You know, I usually see them only land forward, so this one was kind of like backed into the spot. A little yeah, you see, them, <clears throat> you see them come in and a lot of times they'll, whoa, 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 like, yeah. <clears throat> back to front. Excuse me. But then you've got, dude, this guy flew in and was like, wing. Yeah. He just kind of came in. That was cool. Spot. It wasn't really that big of a deal, but I was like, sick. You know, just one of those yeah, things. Yeah, that was dope. And so basically where we're at is they're fighting for this planet. It's the it's one of the largest Republic shipyards. Mm -hmm. And so if the Separatists can take over or destroy these shipyards, there's a huge setback on the side of the Republic. And so um, you've got Mace. And Anakin are the Jedi's that are leading this group. Yeah. Which, one, pretty unusual that the two of them were That's together. That's a couple Just the two of them. Mm -hmm. I think the only time we see that otherwise is on, uh, with the, uh, like the three-armed dinosaur. Mm -hmm. Uh, with the Doug planet. I can't remember the name of that planet. It was, um, Oh, yeah. The, the Zillow Beast. The Zillow Beast. And yeah. so, you know, you see... And what the heck ever happened to that? Uh, I think it was just hinted at that... Palps wanted to, you know, use its armor to figure right. stuff out, but then they, like, fake killed it, and then Palpatine's like, take it back to the lab. Mm -hmm. You know, just, like, very sneaky, sneaky. Anyway, so you never really see them work together very much, so right. you know it's going to be an unusual episode when you see those two together. At the same time, you know, Rex and Cody come in, and they're like, man, we're losing all the time, which you know has to be really wearing on them because Anakin and Mace happen to be some of their more unusual tacticians. You know, some of their more off the wall kind of guys mm -hmm. that do the unexpected. So, yeah, but also some of the best leaders and generals. Right. And so, if Anakin's there, Mace is there, Rex is there, Cody's there, and they're still losing, and they're still losing, something's wrong. Yeah. And so, you've got Cody or uh, Cody and Rex come in, and they say, "We've got these plans. Everything we do." They keep having, like, it's it's chess, but they're one step ahead. Yeah. There's some way they know what we're doing. The way that Cody and Rex came in, like, they had bad news to tell the parents, kind of reminded me of uh, Mickey Donald Goofy, the Three Musketeers, was like, he has something to tell you both. <laughs> and then Cody stepped out of the way, and it was Rex's turn to give the bad news. Right. So, it was very, like, parents uh, to kids. So yeah, yeah, it was, the, you could tell that they felt embarrassed that they had to, yeah. you know. But at the same time, we it was keep important, messing you know, up they, they kind of had to get it out there. Um... Which, obviously, for the episode's purpose, they need to figure things out. But I was like, so if they know all of Rex's plans, why doesn't Cody have plans? Right. <laughs> but anyways, they figure out we're going to take a small group in and we're going to take out this tactician. Mm -hmm. And we don't really know what's going on. So uh, what I was getting to, the part that, not my favorite moment from the episode, but one that I was like, oh, man, that got me, was then you just see Rex... And he's sitting down at his bunk, and he's kind of hunched over, and he looks like he's either sad or he's reading something or whatever. It turns out he's looking at a picture, mm -hmm. and it's a freaking picture, like a squad pic of uh, Cody, then Rex, then Fives, and then Echo. Echo. Was it Echo or was it Heavy? It was Echo. Because okay. he says... Because he mentions Heavy. Yeah, he says, you know, Fives and Echo, and Heavy before that. Like, we're losing so many good soldiers. Mm -hmm. And I was just, oh, man. It just got me because I was like... Because Fives is my favorite clone trooper. Mm -hmm. And so I was... And but Rex is right there. Yeah. And Cody's right there. And so I was just hurting, you know, for them. And yeah, Well, and at the same time, you could tell something was already weighing on uh, Rex. Because mm -hmm. they're doing the briefing and Anakin goes, is there anything else? And yeah. Rex was like, nope. Yeah. You know, everybody in the room knew that yeah, he was Yeah, avoiding the question. And yeah. so... But Anakin and Rex have that good relationship where he's mm -hmm. like, well, we'll figure it out. 
And we find out what's so heavy on his mind, on his heart, is that he really believes that Echo's still alive. Because and he and Echo spent all this time drawing up plans. these plans like they had their shared playbook, and that's the only way that the CIS could constantly be keeping up with their plays. Right. And so... Um, it's very the water boy. It's very interesting because... <laughs> it's interesting because... Deck on it. It's interesting because um, when he says, what's the what's the thing? And I was thinking, when I first said, is there anything else, Rex? And he's like, no, sir. I was like, you know, what's going on? What are they being sneaky about? Well, but it wasn't... dog poop under that rug. It, it wasn't because he was trying to be sneaky. It was because he was embarrassed right. because... Well, he, he, he thought feels like, like he was crazy. Yeah, he yeah, feels like Echo's sure alive, and he's like, there's no way... Uh, and Cody even says, you realize how crazy this sounds. Mm -hmm. But they basically say, okay, let's, let's shelf that conversation because there's no way, uh, but we've got to get this mission done. We've got to take a clone force in. We've got to, we've got to do this. We've got to take out this, this data center. Mm -hmm. And so he says, who are we bringing? And he says, they're called clone force 99. And so again, mm -hmm. we've seen yeah. some of the little clips from the trailers, but also from unreleased stuff that they right. showed on StarWars.com so we kind of knew what we were getting well and uh, I think Cody maybe had something to do with the commissioning of this group because he says that they're Clone Force 99 and Rex is like nice touch mm -hmm. because that was obviously a shout out to Clone Trooper 99 who was you know the mute he was like the hunchback of yeah. uh, Camino. Camino just like a super cool guy had everybody's back he was the reason that a lot of the ARC Troopers got out there he was like the mentor to Heavy and Fives yeah and I go, but he had just gotten his cloning process didn't go well. He had the non desirable been, mutations. Yeah, and so this cool, <laughs> this ship comes in, almost runs over like twelve. Yeah, it clones it had on the way. Very big uh, Knights of Ren vibes, especially the way the engines were shaped. It was obviously like a Republic class vessel, mm -hmm. um, very similar to the one that Palpatine had in Episode Three when he was going to retrieve Anakin. But yeah, it was yeah, just yeah. very like standalone esque. You know what I mean? Yeah, I think it's a. Uh, yeah, it's a very setting a, elite, yeah. you know, starfighter. So they come in, they almost run up like 12 people, and then the the hatch opens, and here comes... Okay, so you've got the leader of the group, Hunter, I think Hunter. his name is. Okay, and then you got the marksman, and I can't remember his name. It was uh, Crosshairs. Crosshair, was it? Maybe, I something like so. that. And then you got Tech, who's like the brainiac of the group. Yeah. And then you've got the Incredible Hulk... AKA Wrecker. Wrecker. Uh, I think Wrecker's my favorite. Just because he's such a, he's just so cool. Um, but he's got kind of like the wolf eye, like the milky eye on the left side. You can tell there's been like a blast or something. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, boom, they're going to go in and immediately they get shot out of the sky by some spider droids. And uh, our, both our first thought was like, man, that'd be a crappy way to lose Rex and Cody and yeah. the entire Bad Batch and Jesse, who's now an ARC trooper. And kicks. And kicks. <laughs> Who's a freaking, like, the best medic. Yeah. So it was just funny because we were thinking... It's like thing. all the best clones in the whole army, and they're all in this one ship. I'm like, eggs in one basket. Yeah. Eggs in one basket. Exactly. You know? So it was cool because, obviously, you know they're going to make it, but, right. again, Clone Wars does such a good job of, like, sucking you into the moment. I was like, oh, my God, what if this? What if these guys die? Like, imagine, like... The Pro Bowl or the NBA All Star Game, or whatever, and they're all on one plane, and something terrible happens. Like right. now, you lose all the All Stars. Right. And it was the same thing where, like, I was, I was, I knew that they were gonna make it. Right. But in the moment, I was like, Oh my God, can, should we take two or three different cars here? Come on, guys, like diversify. But anyways, they get there, and right off the bat, Cody's trapped under the crashed gunship. Yeah, Cody's hurt from the get out. And Rex is like, I'm gonna get him, and they're like, No. Let Wrecker get him. And he's like, you know, he's stuck in there. And he's like, he's not going to move Cody. He's going to move the gunship. And, and he just lifts the whole gunship. Yeah. And then he say, he passively, like, passingly says things like when they're looking at the layout of the of the uh, data center and all this other stuff that they need to infiltrate. And Wrecker goes, oh, that looks like I can move it. We want in! I was like, what is going on with this guy? So, anyways, he was really cool. Poor so. Simpson. No. <laughs> oh my gosh, that'd be crazy. That would be crazy. Um, so, anyways, where do we go from there? They he picks up yeah, and saves so Cody. They pick out 
or pick up the gunship, and he's like, boom. And I was like, good thing Cody's unhelmeted head was pointed directly at the explosion, but we won't get too into that. Five feet behind him. Right? And he's like, he's <laughs> probably going to die anyway. You know, yeah. couldn't care less. But, uh, you know, they've got now a bunch of droids that are coming in, and Rex is like, we'll hold this position. Yeah. And Hunter's like, nah. And also so, known as Rambo. Yeah, Rambo, Rambo Baker. Uh, and so, basically... Basically, Wrecker rips one of the doors off the gunship and uses it as a giant shield. First of all, that thing's like bigger than all four of them combined, and I was like, "Oh, he's just picking it up." Mm -hmm. I was like, "Oh, now he's running with it." Mm -hmm. You know, he's just <laughs> yeah, very, uh, you know, Roman Legion just running with it, and they got the gun ports, and then they had the cool scene where uh, Tech is like getting the coordinates, and then he's calling him out. Hunter throws the. EMP perfect grenade, throw, perfect throw, like exact coordinates, and then crosshair shoots him out of the, out of the sky or you know wherever they out of the sky, yeah, yeah. out of the sky. <laughs> uh, and so just really cool moments. And then I thought something that was really cool was uh, they're like, all right, time to move out. And then Wrecker like moves the wall out of all their ways, and they scatter. And then uh, you see Hunter kill a spider droid by stabbing it in the eye. That was mm -hmm. something we never seen. Even though, I mean, it was just cool because episode three, you get that scene where they're infiltrating Utapau mm -hmm. and the clone trooper, you know, shoots the spider droid from on top and you right. see that again in the Clone Wars. Or I guess those are crab droids. That's crab what I'm thinking of. Um, and so, you know, it was just like a new way of killing them. So mm -hmm. it shows that these guys are already different. Right. Uh, Frickin' Wrecker uses the gunship door to like reflect the fire back onto the droid. Yeah, that was it. it. Freaking cool stuff going on. Mm -hmm. Um. And we mentioned also this kind of we we thought about this later, but it's cool because there's a lot of times, um, like obviously we're sci-fi fans, so we love you know Lord of the Rings and stuff like that. There's a specific set of uh, novels that we like called The Dwarves mm -hmm. by author Marcus Heights, and uh, there's a lot of times where what happens is you've got, you know, the Fellowship of the Ring type scenario, the Dirty Dozen, like mm -hmm. a group that's on a mission, right? right? And everybody has their little niche that they're good at. But it's kind of like with Lord of the Rings, uh, you can't have, like, you've got to protect the hobbits. So right. it's like, you've got the Gillies and the Legolases and the Aragorns, and they can fight, and, and Gandalf can do his thing. He's kind of a fighter, but he's more of a wizard. Um, I mean, obviously, he's a great fighter, too. But you have the hobbits, and it's like, they're the most precious cargo, and mm -hmm. they, they have the ring, and they're the one that can carry it, but they can't really fight. Yeah. You Sam's know? got a frying pan. That's about it. Yeah. But it was <laughs> so cool, because, obviously... Wrecker's massive. Right. He's just going to throw everybody. He's That's going to work for us. You know, but we specifically mentioned that it was so cool that Tech is like this brainiac that has all this head knowledge. Right, but he's still like... He's, he's your tech fighter. guy. Yeah. yeah, like he's the guy that's like, I'll get you in. And he's like... Dun, 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 dun. Almost like the R2, like spinny finger right. guy. Uh, but then as they're infiltrating the, the data center... Yeah, it's cool because he's, he's got DC-17s. He's, you know, dual wielding just yeah, like yeah. Rex. DC-17. Cool. It's the hand fister. Is it? Hand fister. The, I thought DVC-17 was the, the Republic Commando. Uh, uh, no. Oh. Well, it was cool because all the different equipment is specialized. Mm -hmm. And uh, I do love that Wrecker has very much Republic Commando stuff. Like he's got the Republic Commando backpack. Mm -hmm. He's got the Republic Commando, you know, rifle. Yeah, they have a helmet style for him that's very similar to uh, that which was the Boba Fett. Um, concept art that they kind of brought back for Obi Wan. That's what his helmet really reminds me of. Oh, the Rayco Hardeen look. Mm -hmm. Interesting. That's what it kind of reminds me of. I was thinking, just as a side note, mm -hmm. and I think just I asked me something. I was like, sorry, I'm just thinking how much this one guy must cost them in armor because they've got to custom make literally everything that he right. wears. Right. Like, if he goes through a test plate, that's a whole custom job. I was like, this one dude is expensive. Yeah, his his everything's. Bigger. I mean, he's like head and shoulders bigger than the yeah. rest. Yeah, it's not even close. Dude, I cannot think of what the name of this blaster is. DC-17 is definitely the pistols. 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 Um, and I did think it was interesting that Hunter, mm -hmm. who we find out his specialty, he looks pretty regular. You know, he's right. got the cool skull face tattoo he's that's the, dope. He's the leader. He's the leader, but nobody really knows. And so Tech is like, he's got heightened senses. Dude. and he, he can, from like anywhere on this planet, sense something as large as the place they were trying to find. Yeah. And so, like, they're not even following the hollow map, they're just following this dude's Yeah, senses. it was interesting because they said that he can follow 
like electromagnetic frequencies. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That was it reminded me kind of like, like sharks. Yeah. Like how they can just smell blood from like forever away. Yeah. I was also thinking there's this show called, uh, dang, I can't remember the name of it. Is it Alphas? I don't think you watched it with me, but there's this kid and he can like see technology. So like he'll see cell phone waves moving and he'll be able to like tap in and read people's text messages and stuff like that. Oh, that's cool. Um, that's what it kind of reminded me of. But I thought it was interesting that as custom as everything was, he was just out there carrying a regular E11. Pretty okay, dangerous guy. Dumb. The Republic Commando gun is a DC-17M um, for modification, whatever. But yeah, it was cool because uh, you start to see... But he also used a vibro blade, which was very cool. Yeah. Yeah, because we don't see a lot of that. Yeah. But in the, if, you're, if you're a fan of the novels, it's like... Fiber blades are a dime a dozen, but right. in the movies you don't really see them. Yeah, you don't see them a whole lot. Um, so that's really cool. So uh, I guess what what we so it's we now for sure know all the speculation was for not. It's thirty four episode arcs for mm -hmm. sure, um, and they're saying this is the final season. And I know Star Wars has a history of doing that. My God, how many people have come back from the dead or right. all that sort of thing? So who knows? But what? Um, where do you, I mean, we kind of, here's the thing, whenever they were doing the th the, the movement, whenever there's the, uh, ha uh, Wrecker had the, I keep wanting to call him Heavy, R.I.P., uh, Wrecker had the door there, and then they were throwing the bombs and shooting mm -hmm. them and stuff, I remember seeing that in the previous uh, episodes that were, the little skeleton version was released online, uh, so they did follow a lot of the story arc, but mm -hmm. I wonder if they made some changes going forward. I think sense. they would have to, just to keep it a little tasty. Mm -hmm. um, this particular episode was directed by Dave Filoni, so... Well, the whole se series is... Is it going to be all, yeah. all of it? Okay. I didn't know if they were just going to, you know, no, maybe, I think, maybe give them out. I know with Mandalorian, it like... Right, I didn't know that. if maybe they were going to do that since it's like kind of a, an exclusive event. But anyway, so Filoni was in charge of this, and so he was definitely the guy mm -hmm. that was like all the throwbacks, all the, you know, little right. compartmentalized references. Uh, the droids being like, hey, do you know what's going on? And they're like, I don't know, maybe another drill. Very much a shout-out to New Hope. Yep. Um, but he also is kind of the guy that likes to do things a little unexpected as well. Mm -hmm. I think maybe this is, like, kind of a breadcrumb trail to get us a little too familiar, and then something's going to shake our world. Something different? Yeah. That'd be cool. I know in the... Um, so basically, going forward, they get there, and, of course, Rex has been saying, I know it sounds crazy, but I think that... Somehow they've got Echo. Yeah. And well, if so, you've watched Clone Wars at all, you kind of expect this a little bit because anytime Rex or Anakin or Ahsoka is like, I might have a wild hair, but you it's usually, whatever it's comes usually that gonna, comma yeah. is what's going to happen. Yeah, it's usually. Um, but so they, they find the, the signal coming from a, a different planet and they intercept it, and, it's, and he, Rex tells Tech, ask her what the name is of this person that's sending out the right. signal. Rex is the one that has the algorithm pattern that they're looking for to be able to find this communication wave because he's the only one that's really theorizing what it is. Um, Trench calls it the algorithm, mm -hmm. but we find out that it's not an algorithm. It's a live feed from a different planet, and the guy tech, he's like, it almost sounds human. Mm -hmm. And Rex, you know, has him pushing a little bit further, Lo and behold, it's what, CT1409? Something like that. Uh, it's Echo's, Echo's clone trooper number. Clone trooper number. So the algorithm, my, the way I understood it was, the algorithm is, um, you know, plug in and see if they're using this algorithm is what Rex tells Tech. Yeah, I and think is, he's is just that looking, like a list of his plans? Or I like, think it's just the pattern that he and Echo would have drawn up together. Yeah. Um, so I think he was just looking for that sense of familiarity. Mm -hmm. um, and obviously it paid out because we find out Rex isn't a madman. Yeah. You know, Echo's very much alive. Mm -hmm. uh, sorry, I wonder reference. I wonder if uh I wonder Echo's plugged in, obviously to something somewhere, and he it's gotta be that you've got him some kind of like I don't know I don't know how it would work out. It seems like I can't imagine Echo knowing Echo to be the guy who was, yeah, so. Right. It's and at almost one point, like Rex says. Taps into his hardware, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah. I think he's got to be some kind of, not sedated like he's asleep, but I think that he's got to be hooked up to some kind of machinery right. or something. Right, well, and it sounded like 
and I don't want to give too much away from what the previous story arcs have been saying. It just you don't want to know yeah. if you haven't seen it, but it just made him sound very droney, like he's like you know CT one four zero nine. You know, it's just yeah, like yeah. very not a communication. It's very much a anytime you see anybody in a trance in any movie ever, they're just like, this is what I'm saying. Yeah, you yeah. Know, there's very no emotion. There's mm-hmm. You know, no emphasis, it's just raw data. It kind of sounds like they're hooked up to the Matrix and you're talking to their body versus talking to them in the Matrix, right. you know? Uh, but, man, who knows? So, we've got three more episodes in this story arc. Mm-hmm. And so, it makes me wonder how... I mean, so, we know that's Echo's number, so mm-hmm. we assume it's Echo, right, obviously. Right. And so, I wonder how soon we're going to get to him because there's other things that need to happen in this area... You know, mm-hmm. it can't be four episodes of them going to get Echo and then that's just it. They've got to come back and win the battle. And we yeah. know from the trailer that well, and Anakin you... faces off against Trench. Yeah, so they've got to go. And, and it makes total sense that the reason Anakin's so ticked is because he finds out that Trench has been kind of like yeah torturing Echo. Well, especially if it's a, a clone trooper that had any significant ties to Anakin, which Echo did. That would take him off. Because um, Anakin and... Obi-Wan and Plo Koon especially are very much, you know, relationship oriented with the clones mm-hmm. where, you know, they see them as more people than just tools. And he was at the Citadel mm-hmm. with them when, when Echo died. Yeah, and so uh, it would make sense that Trench would probably want to be present to protect him if they found out that right. that is compromised. Um, maybe they're going to have it, you know, where Echo's going to be moved or, you know what I mean? I think there's mm-hmm. going to be a little bit of a wild Close. goose chase. Um, that's going to help it, you know, keep going for mm-hmm. longer. Um, but, man, I don't want to have to wait four weeks to find out. Yeah, I know. I definitely want to get to... I would like to get to Echo and rescue him next week. Right. Part of me likes that the story arc will be longer. Right. But as I'm having to already wait a week to see what's going to happen... Yeah, I don't want to... And I'm realizing now that I'm a little bit more grateful for the Mandalorian's... Uh, single, single episode arcs right. in the moment because longevity down the road. I'm glad that we'll be able to watch three or four episodes back to back to back. Right. But right now I'm like, it won't stop itching right. and I'm scratching. Got any more of those? <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, man, who knows? I think that uh, I think that maybe they'll maybe they'll find him and they'll get there and then they rescue him in the third one. And then episode four is just when Anakin goes all dark side on Trench and like yeah, everybody or in maybe, the vicinity. Maybe I'm wrong in my earlier speculation that Trench would you know double back. Maybe Trench still tries to operate things from a distance, and then once they get Echo, they've got to hunt down Trench because Trench is kind of maybe this operation. I know for sure that when they say because uh, Skeko Minor is where the signal's coming from, that's where Echo signals mm-hmm. coming from, and so when they say. You know, we we this all this huge group of droids comes to the to the data center. You know, oh, something else that was cool. We see those little droid transports, and we oh, saw yeah. B twos drop out of there. I've only ever seen B ones yeah. drop out of there. Yeah, you have episode one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we never seen B B twos drop out of there, so that was cool. At least not that I can remember. No, I don't remember that at all. Uh, but it was cool because these um, huge amount of droids come and they basically kind of off of the past yeah and they're trying to get the clones out of there and you know the group you know rex and all them and, and the bad batch they get out they leave and then you wonder you know what's what's going on and trench talks to his tactical droid and they say we've chased them out they've been left and trench said did they get anything did they take anything and they said no no nothing's been stolen the only thing that happened was there was a uh, a conversation or a signal sent out to skeko minor and like Towards the very, very end of the episode. Trench goes, what? What? <laughs> and so, uh, very, very Vader of yeah. him. Uh, and then right after that's when you say, you know, what did that signal mean? Mm-hmm. You know, uh, Data's at, or Tech is asking Rex. Rex, and he says, that was Echo's clone trooper number. And that's the end of the episode. So, maybe you're right. Maybe Trench does know, holy crap, they kind of unlocked the, mm-hmm. the mystery. Well, and that was... So maybe he moves him from Skeko Minor. Yeah, that was definitely Trench's biggest concern from the get was that he was saying they know about the algorithm so because the, algorithm. the tactical droid uh, follows up there at like kind of the command tower that you see at like a, an airport or something. Mm-hmm. 
that's overlooking the, the rest. checkpoint. Yeah, and so uh, the tactical droids like, you know, they took over this and then they just abandoned it. I can't calculate the logic. You mm-hmm. know, so it's cool because they're nothing but predictable up until this point. And the tactical droids like the bad batch just switches it up. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so then, you know, Trench is saying, hey, you know, this isn't their target. They're going, you know, to the, mm-hmm. the command outpost or whatever it's called, the tactical something or other. And he's like, they know about the algorithm. You know, that's that's what their concern was. Yeah, Trench catches on pretty quick. Mm-hmm. Of course, he's a master tactician himself. Yeah. Uh, so I can see where his, his obviously him and Anakin have history. Mm-hmm. And so his, a lot of his thing is, this is his chance to get a leg up on the competition and they're they're figuring out mm-hmm. that they've got their hand in the cookie jar. Yeah. And so he's trying to get them out of there. So who knows? I think that maybe they'll find Echo next episode and then the next two episodes are just kind of maybe they find him and then the third episode is safely getting him back and then the fourth episode is defeating Trench. Mm-hmm. I don't know. But we I feel like it's we have to see off. Trench. Trench die. has to get finished for sure's for sure's. Like cut his head off. Yeah, I think we're gonna get those that dark side Anakin a little bit, mm-hmm. very much a call out to episode three after Lord City has promised us peace. And I think very much like it's a picture of classic Anakin mm-hmm. out of his love for the people around him, out of his protectiveness for the people around him, he embraces the dark side with his emotions. Yeah. So anyways, I think that'll be really cool. So man, so much speculation. And that's yeah. we're only one episode in. It's and then the world for sure. We'll have man. So you know what that means? That means that Ahsoka returns will be the middle arc. So we're eight weeks away from Maul still. Maybe. <sighs> that sucks. Yeah, because I think they've got a I don't know. I don't know if they'll write Ahsoka out of the story in the middle of it. Or if they want to save that for the very end. You know what I well, mean? Well well Maul and Ahsoka face off on Mandalore. Oh, okay. So yeah. you're gonna get, maybe she's not in every episode, but her she has there's there's an arc that's just about her returning, so we're gonna get four episodes with her coming back, and there's gotta be maybe that's the arc that has the stuff that we don't know about yet in it because they can't have four episodes of her coming back and going I'm back like yeah. there's gotta be something going on there. Um, well, I definitely think they're gonna work their way up to the Ahsoka novel. You know what I mean? That yeah. Her, her, well, we know yeah, at the very her. beginning of the Ahsoka novel is basically during Order 66. Mm-hmm. And they're fighting on Mandalore. So, I think the very end of Seizure Mandalore will be basically the very beginning of uh, of the Ahsoka novel. And we'll see the 501st with, um, or part of the 501st, or whatever... I don't know, it's weird, because there's the 501st now, but they're going to have the Ahsoka helmets, so maybe they like split and become a new division. But we'll see them yeah. with Ahsoka, and they'll turn mid-siege. Make sense? Yeah, I'm with you. I'm so, just thinking about the technical aspect of it. Yeah. So it'll be crazy. Uh, and we'll get to see Maul versus Ahsoka, and that'll be fun. I kind of want Maul the trasher. Yeah. I want it. I, I would be totally cool with Maul just beating Ahsoka, and... She pulls a quick one on him at the very end. Like, she's losing. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I just really want... I, I don't mind Ahsoka, but to me, Maul is just the better duelist. For and sure. so I want to see Maul be able to beat her, and then something happens where there's some kind of intervention. You know, like a bunch of clone troopers surround him, and he has to escape or something. Like, And I have an idea of what's going to happen, but if it's if Ahsoka just beats him outright, or if it's like... They're just chess masters back and forth, and they're equally matched. I just don't... I like Ahsoka. Okay, yeah. Don't get me wrong. Love Ahsoka. But she's not Darth Maul. Yeah, so I, I, don't, think I, don't, I don't want Ahsoka, her to best like, if, if roles were reversed, I don't think Ahsoka would have lasted as long as Maul. Does that make sense? Like, by herself? All right. right. I mean, yeah, she's been gone for like two seconds, and the next arc is called Ahsoka Returns, so she clearly couldn't make it by herself like My for point a while. is that... I think she just doesn't have the same grit that Maul has. Yeah. That would give him the edge in a one-on-one confrontation. Mm-hmm. That's true. That's true. So we'll see. He's a lot more resourceful. He's a lot angrier. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and so also very cool stuff going on. Uh, New York Toy Fair is happening this weekend. And so they're going to be releasing a bunch of new, uncovering a bunch of new Hasbro stuff. You know, Black Series and all that kind of stuff. So who knows? Um, so that'll be cool news that we'll try to cover on our Instagram page and stuff like that. Um, any other thoughts? I mean, there's 
there's so much that we could just speculate on, but unpacking that specific episode. Uh, I'm trying to think if there are any cool, other really cool moments. I think I've named all the ones that I thought were really, really dope. Yeah. I'm just sad I didn't see Obi Wan or Maul this first episode. Yeah. I mean, I get it. It's about the Bad Batch. Yeah. I mean, it would have been, I don't know, it would have been cool to see Anakin interact with the Bad Batch because mm-hmm. it's like bull meat china shop. You know what I mean? Yeah. 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 They're, they're both bulls, actually. You know, plot twist. Two bulls in a china <laughs> shop. Uh, and they're both the bull, and yet they're both the china shop. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> I, so. I feel like I like everybody in the Bad Batch. I know you don't more like more like than this crosshairs. Yeah, and it, I think it's maybe just because I don't like the idea. He of, was the, like he was the confrontationalist. He's so confrontational, and I I don't I don't understand why. I don't know. I'm just so used to glad I'm sticking together with brothers. Yeah, and so well, I, I think, like that he. I think maybe he, he just takes it a little bit more, more personally than yeah. the others. I think maybe he just feels like he was engineered differently, so that's a chip on his shoulder. But it's also like I think a pride for him that he's like, well, we're different. Right. You know well, I mean? at the same time, even within the group, he's the guy that's always by himself. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So yeah, least, yeah from the very beginning, he's the most removed. He doesn't have much to say from his group, and yeah. so he's that much more removed from the group that he's already removed from with right. his group that right. he's removed from. You know right. what I mean? For sure, for sure. So it's cool. I think that definitely Rex and Jesse in this arc have started to earn their respect, even through this first episode. Mm-hmm. I will say. That Arc Trooper Jesse looks sick. Yeah. And I, I've, it's I've the manliest skirt I've ever seen. I've always, I've always loved uh, his Republic tattoo on his face. Yeah, that's pretty dope. Pretty pretty cool. Uh, it's gonna be really sucky whenever it turns into the Empire and he's gotta get it changed or whatever. Um, but yeah, I think Jesse as a as an Arc Trooper looks really really dope. Mm-hmm. Um, they didn't necessarily reference him as an Arc Trooper, but he's got all the same outfit on. Mm-hmm. So who knows? I assume he's an Arc Trooper now. No, they seem to hand up that like candy, so we'll see. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I'm I'm good with that. You cool with that? I'm cool with it. So just remember, may the force be with you always. And the only family you have here is me. <laughs> we'll see you guys next time. What's up, guys? Hey, we hope you liked this episode of the Chiss Ascendancy. If you enjoyed it, please like this video, subscribe, hit the notification bell so you know when you get a new video, and then also follow us on Instagram at Chiss Ascendancy Podcast. You can also find an audio-only version on Spotify and Apple Podcasts at The Chess Ascendancy. We'll see you next time.